Hello students, welcome to physics platter. In physics platter, today we are going to derive, uh, discuss about the angle of deviation by a prism. So what is deviation? We know that light travels in a straight line, right? If this is a light ray, it would travel in a straight line, unless there would, there is an optical event happening in the middle. For example, let's say the light falls on a surface and then gets refracted, surface of a different uh, density of course, then gets refracted. What is refraction? Refraction is a bending of light from a surface. So when the light falls on this surface, it would bend from its original path. So deviation is the angle by which it is bending. So this angle is called the deviation. So deviation is the angle by which it is bending from its original path. Okay, so today we are going to derive the angle of deviation delta for a prism. Alright, for that we should know some basic things. What are the things? First of all, in a triangle, let's say number 1, in a triangle A, B, C, the sum of three angles, angle A plus B plus C equals to 180 degree. That's number one fact. Then number two. What is number two? Number two is in a quadrilateral, any quadrilateral, a close two dimensional surface uh, which is a structure which is closed by four lines. The sum of four angles, let's say this is A, B, C, D, then sum of four angles A plus B plus C plus D equals to 360 degrees. Alright. Then the third point. What is the third point? In a triangle A, B, C, if we extend one of the lines, to D, let's say we extend the line BC up to D, then this angle is called the exterior angle of the of the of the triangle. In such case, this exterior angle theta is given as the sum of the opposite two interior angles. Alright? So these are the th th three things that we will be using. First of all, the sum of three angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Then sum of four angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. And then the exterior angle of a triangle is equals to the interior opposite, sum of the opposite two interior angles. All right. So let's move on to the proof. To do the proof, first of all, we should know what is a prism. A prism is a three-dimensional solid structure which is covered by plane surfaces and whose cross section would look like a triangle. So the prism would look like something like this. Something like this. Okay. Who has which has uh, five, five plane surfaces made of a transparent object, for example, a transparent material, for example, glass. And then there are five surfaces out of which two are triangles and then three are rectangles. Okay. So if we look from this side at a prism, we will look only the, at the cross section of the prism, which is a triangle. All right. And then if let's say from the side if we look like this look like this then the triangle we will see only the triangle part which is the cross section of the prism and if you name it b then bc is called the base of the prism and the angle a is called the angle of the prism all right now if a light falls a light ray falls on the prism then it will fall on one of the rectangular surfaces and then it will get refracted. Now the light is going from the 
rarer to the denser medium which means the light after refraction at this surface will bend towards the normal so it would bend like this all right where well, let's say p q is the incident incident ray on the surface on the prism and then q n1 let's say is a normal drawn on the surface okay now this ray after refraction bends and then goes towards the second surface now on this surface also the light will get reflect refracted let's say this surface the normal is n2 this time the light goes from the denser to the rarer medium that means it will go away from the normal something like this okay now see okay let's say this uh, the ray inside the prism let's say is pq this is r and then the emergent ray is the, is called the rs let's say okay that means this angle is the angle of incidence let's say it's i1 and this angle is the angle of emergence which is denoted as e angle of emergence e okay and if we, if we in, uh, extend the two normals from the two surfaces they meet at some point which is let's say is called the o now what is the angle of deviation of course the light li the light before was going in this direction and the final emergent ray is going in the that in the in this direction that means it has bent how much does it did it bend it would it was supposed to go along this direction but it is going along that direction that means if we extend this this would be the angle of division delta okay now if we name this point of interaction between the previous path of the light and the emergent part as m then and this let's say uh, this one is let's say k then angle k m r angle k m r is a angle of division and how much is it so we will calculate this angle in terms of the angle of incidence i1 i1 and then angle of emergence e and then the angle of the prism a we will calculate the del in terms of these three quantities all right now on the first surface let's say the angle of refraction is r1 this angle okay which means r q o is r1 on the second surface let's say angle of incidence is r2 okay let's say this angle is theta 1 and this angle is theta 2 here you have put a more clear picture so that we don't uh, it doesn't look so messy okay so um, we will find the angle of deviation here which is the angle k m r which is equals to delta which is equal which is the exterior angle of the triangle m q r see here m q r all right that means this exterior angle must be equal to the two opposite interior angles which are the theta 1 and theta 2 so the delta is the exterior on angle of the prism uh, of the triangle m q r and that must be equals to the sum of the two opposite uh, interior angles of the of the triangle theta 1 and theta 2 that means delta equals to theta 1 plus theta 2 all right now see here this i1 is the angle of incidence here that means this line no and pm are crossing each other at the point q all right and these two i1 and this angle which is q1 plus r2 are the opposite angles that means they must be equal to each other which gives us i1 equals to theta 1 plus r1 which gives theta 1 equals to i1 minus r1 okay 
all right next let's go to the next surface here similarly we can write that theta 2 theta 2 equals to e minus r 2 for the same reason all right that means if we put these values here the delta becomes delta becomes theta 1 plus theta 2 now theta 1 equals to i1 minus r1 whereas theta 2 equals to plus e minus r2 that gives us i1 plus e minus r1 plus r2 okay this gives a angle of division now we know i1 and e which are which are given but we don't know the angle of refractions r1 and r2 so we will calculate the value of r1 plus r2 in terms of the a now let's consider the the quadrilateral a q o r here a q o r okay in this quadrilateral the angle q and angle r the 90 degrees are 90 degrees because no is a normal to the surface and o n2 is a normal to the second surface right that means two opposite angles of this quadrilateral are 90 degrees which gives us a plus o angle a plus o equals to 180 degrees all right same thing we can write again that if we consider the triangle let's say if we consider the triangle OQR OQR then we can write from this triangle that O plus R1 plus R2 equals to 180 degrees all right both are 180 degrees from these two these two equations we can write that A plus O equals to O plus R1 plus R2. O, O cancel each other which gives us A equals to R1 plus R2. Right. Now if you put this value of R1 plus R2 in the expression for delta angle of deviation it gives us delta equals to I1 plus E plus excuse me minus so delta gives it gives us i1 plus e minus r1 plus r2 which is a so this is the angle of division for us for a prism where the angle of division is given as the angle of incidence on the first surface plus angle of emergence on the second surface minus the angle of the prism okay so this is the angle of the division of a in a prism see you in the next video until then take care bye